Can we just talk about that one yeah, you just said? Yeah. Have we ever talked about 617 before? Six, I don't even know is what 617 even, is. It's so, I guess, I don't know. It's so strange. When you said, don't set it at six, and you just said, my, in my mind, I was like, yeah, 617, just before you said it. No. And yeah, I'm not kidding. So is that like your wake-up time? No, it isn't. I wake up at six. Okay, so why did you think 617? <laughs> I have no idea. That's what I was asking you. Have we talked about it before? And I was like, no. was that the time you wake up? Or did no. we discuss that in Napa? Or? No. That is so strange. No. I, literally, I, I literally was like, yeah, she's going to say 617. That is bizarre. And, and I'm trying to think now, where in my mind is 617? Anyway, but, but the point being, I, I really, really like that principle. And, and what I found, and you're so right that every day is different, is I found sleep, sleeping the same amount of time yes. is more important than waking up at the same time. Well, do you know the research around the snooze button? Yes, yeah. Yes, exactly. okay. And please it's tell also, us, please yes, tell us. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so literally, it also when it comes to productivity and focus and fulfillment, it's not when you get up, it's how you get up. Mm. And there's all this crazy research. Like I'm not some sort of like psycho about the alarm clock or the snooze button. I personally love sleeping in. But I also know that as somebody that struggled with anxiety for three decades, lying in bed in the morning or at night is the worst place I can be. Absolutely. That is where the anxiety can pin you down like a gravity blanket. And so understanding that the habit of hitting the snooze button has a detrimental impact on your productivity all day. Because what happens is when you wake up, your brain is typically ready to wake up. When you drift back to sleep after hitting the snooze button, your brain drifts back into a sleep cycle, which based on research takes about 75 minutes to complete. When the alarm goes off nine minutes later, your brain is now trapped in a sleep cycle and researchers say it takes you about four hours to snap out of what they call sleep inertia. That impacts your productivity all day long. And so you're complaining that I didn't get enough sleep and you feel groggy. No, you actually got plenty of sleep. You screwed yourself over by hitting the snooze button and now mm -hmm. your prefrontal cortex can't snap back into operation until you're ready to go. And what to speak about emotionally, which is what you were talking about earlier, about you've broken your trust with yourself. And that's why when we set these unrealistic targets, oh, I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow, I'm going to wake up at 6, whatever it is that's unrealistic for you. And then you hit the snooze button four times. Yep. And you wake up at the time you would have woken up at anyway. Yep. That's just made you lose faith in yourself over nothing, right? Totally. And that's the problem. Totally. See, I, I'm kind of one of these people that I sort of like lame goals. Because I want you to win. You know, I'm, I'm just asking for a high five in the mirror. I'm just asking that you roll out of bed, five, four, three, two, one. Here's another wonderful one. Make your bed. Yes. And here's why. Not because I need you to be a Navy SEAL, but because when you literally, and I'm not even talking pop a quarter off of it. I'm talking throw the blanket across, karate chop a pillow, throw a throw on a diagonal, we're done here <laughs> kind of thing. Here's why. Number one, it's a beautiful gift you can give to yourself mm -hmm. because as you walk back into your room, it's done. You mm -hmm. don't see a mess. Your brain sees a person that actually is kind to themselves and follows through on things. Mm -hmm. Tonight, when you lay down to dream, you have a nice place to come back to. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm talking about with lame, lame goals and what I call simple discipline. Simple discipline is roll out of bed when the alarm rings. Mm -hmm. Simple discipline is make your bed. Simple discipline. I'm even going to make exercise easy. You want to hear? Yeah, go this for it. This is so yeah, easy. Yeah. Okay, you ready? Tonight, in your closet, get your exercise clothes out, mm -hmm. lay them on the floor, put them right in your way so you can't step around them mm -hmm. because then they're there as a trap on your floor the next morning. Again, you don't have to think about it. Yeah. You're like, oh my gosh, stepping over them is you breaking a promise. When you pull them on, I know you're more likely to exercise today because they're already on your body. And so, but in my book, we're practicing simple things here. Mm -hmm. So you get a high five just for pulling the tights on, man. Like I'm not even going to count exercising. If you get the exercise clothes on, we've gotten up, we've made our bed, <laughs> we got our exercise. Now we're going to high five the mirror. Honey, you just got four wins. You've only been up for 20 seconds. This is the Mel Robbins program. <laughs> this is how you build trust with yourself. Yes. By setting really small goals little tiny promises because you're building a new muscle. And the most important promise in all of this is how you treat yourself in the mirror. Mm. Because as you know, Jay, that relationship that you have with yourself is the foundation for every relationship that you have. Mm. If you can't look yourself in the eye, 
you will never be able to allow somebody else to love you because yeah. you don't first love yourself. Yeah. If you struggle with people pleasing, that's not about other people. That's about your insecurity with yourself. Yeah. So it comes back again to the simple discipline of looking at yourself and learning how to be secure mm -hmm. with the one human being you spend your whole life with. Yeah. And the only way you're going to start being secure with who you are is when you start accepting and loving who you are, no matter where you are, whether you exercise today or not, whether you blew it yesterday or not, whether you really are trying hard and winning or not. I love that. I, I, for me, making my bed also improves my relationship with my wife because she happens to wake up earlier than me. And therefore, <laughs> we have a rule in our house. Whoever wakes up second does the bed, which means I end up doing the bed. But I don't like that rule because my husband gets up first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so anyway, I, I always have to do my bed. But my wife also likes to have like 20 pillows on the bed. So there's more pillows on the bed than there is a bed. And and so I really don't enjoy doing the bed because I have to like organize these pillows. Now, uh, does she do the karate chop? Do you have to have the karate I, chop I on the I have to do it. Yeah, yes. I have to yes, do the karate chop. I have thing. to lay the throw. Uh -huh. I've got to put three pillows, one behind the other. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's like real work. But by the time I finish doing that, I'm like, I can do anything. Yes. But, I, I love all these principles you're talking about, but the biggest thing is the theme that's underlying all of them is celebrate, congratulate, build trust, which you're so right that this, if anyone's listening and thinking, oh, well, if I celebrate these little things and I'll never do anything big. No, it's, it's the other way around. It's that if you build trust with yourself doing these little things, you'll trust yourself with bigger things. And, and anyone that you see that's doing big, bold, incredible things today is because they trusted themselves with the tiny, small, incremental changes. Yeah. And so when Mel's saying, celebrate just putting the gym clothes on, she's saying that because if you celebrate that, you'll notice that, hey, I can trust myself for this.